Hey, this is Andrew Brown, and welcome to the Microsoft Azure Fundamentals. And we're asking the most important question uh, first, which is, what is the certification? Well, uh, the Azure Fundamentals is the entry-level cloud certification for Microsoft Azure, or Azure. Uh, and you'll see me alternate between those uh, pronunciations. They're both accepted, so whichever you prefer. Um, there is no prerequisite for this certification. Uh, but you should probably have a little bit of IT experience, but if you don't, it's totally fine. If you're totally new to cloud, you'll still be okay here. Uh, the key topics that we are covering is understanding the basics of cloud computing, exploring the benefits of using cloud services, uh, and looking at those core services, the, the, those being computing, networking, storage, and databases, understanding identity security governance. So, you know, one example for identity would be Entra ID, uh, previously known as Azure AD, something you'll hear again and again through all the uh, Microsoft certification courses, um, understanding how pricing works, uh, things like subscriptions uh, and cost management tools, and uh, learning about the tools available for managing Azure resources, uh, such as Azure Portal or the SDK or the CLI, things like that. Uh, Microsoft Azure is the second leading cloud service provider in the world, the first being AWS, but uh, let that not uh, discourage you because Azure is still an extremely uh, a great uh, cloud service uh, to use and um, it's used quite a lot. So Azure Fundamentals is a very common starting point for people breaking the cloud, uh, similar to the AWS Cloud Practitioner. So both are really great entries uh, into cloud. Who is the certification for? Well, consider this uh, fundamental certification if you are new to cloud and you want to learn the fundamentals and benefits adopting cloud services in general. You are from a non-technical background, such as an executive management or sales level, and you need to acquire strategic information about cl uh, cloud for adoption or migration. You want to understand the capabilities of Azure and how to build basic solutions and deploy cloud services in your organization. Very, very basic, but I mean, the, the objective of these uh, fundamental certifications is not to really teach you how to build cloud workloads. Um, that is more at the associate level, but we'll talk about that later on. Uh, or you're a senior cloud engineer or solution architect or, uh, or cloud architect who needs a reset or refresh their knowledge after working with Azure for multiple years, but maybe you didn't notice some things change, so it's a great uh, revisit to get an idea of what is going on here. So what is the value of the certification? Well, the fundamentals is uh, provides the most expensive view possible for um, uh, cloud architecture and Azure. Uh, I like to say this is gonna provide you a bird's eye view or the 50,000 foot view. So we're gonna cover a lot of stuff, uh, but it's not gonna be uh, as detailed as you would imagine. But uh, the idea here is to promote big picture thinking, zooming out and assessing the cloud and Azure landscape for changes, trends, opportunities, uh, and being strategic about the approach and process for our cloud journey, okay? Um, the Azure Fundamentals is not a difficult exam. It will not validate that you can build cloud workloads. Um, uh, for technical roles, such as developer, engineer, or DevOps, it's not gonna be enough to obtain those roles, but it, it's possible that it could shortlist your resume for interview. Um, the exam covers content not found in other certifications, so strongly recommend that you take this as your foundational certification. A lot of people like to skip fundamentals because they say, be, they think that they're easy. Yes, the certification's easy, but the exam content has a lot of stuff in it, uh, especially mine because I pack in a ton of stuff that I just, I'm not gonna put at the next level because I'm gonna assume that you're taking this course uh, and getting all that knowledge there. Uh, the AZ-900 lays uh, a, a good foundation for specialized uh, or specialization for Azure certifications and is a stepping stone for professional de development in cloud services. So definitely there is value in the AZ-900. Let's go take a look at the Azure roadmap. And this is not all of the Azure certifications and Microsoft certifications. They just have too many. I cannot fit them all on screen here. And um, I think all the course codes are up to date, but they're changing them all the time. So... Uh, it's possible that they might be incremented by some versions, but the, in the entry, we have the Azure Fundamentals. There are other fundamental certifications. Um, we have the AI 900, which is for AI. We have the DP 900, which is for data. Uh, we have the SC 900, which is for security. But again, I don't have room for all that, so I'm not showing them on here. So I'm showing you the path that is commonly uh, completed after taking the AZ-900. So you have uh, some associate certifications, you have a couple expert certifications, you have specialty certifications. There's definitely more associates, there's definitely more specialties, but there's always the two pros or experts, I should say. So getting my uh, handy pen out here, 
very often what people go for after the fundamentals is the administrator, the AZ-104. This is the most common path uh, for those that are going to their next step in their Azure journey. And a lot of times people are going for that solutions architect expert, which is over here. But before you do that, you really want to go and grab that uh, de uh, developer, the AZ-204. These are the uh, this is the, the the most common strategy right here is uh, these. But of course, it really depends on what you're doing. If you're doing security, you have the SC900, and then there's three different associate level security certifications. Uh, if you are going after data, that's a whole different track. So it's going to really vary based on that. But um, again, you know, this is the most common track. And even if you go uh, do all of this and you want to do something else, that's totally fine because this is going to lay a very, very strong foundation uh, and give you uh, really good skills in Azure. So how long does it take to study for this certification? Well, if you're a beginner, we're looking at about 30 hours. And this is someone that's never written uh, or used Azure or any cloud provider or never written any code or held a tech role. Technically, the certification doesn't require you to code, but uh, I really want to make sure that I set you up really well because in Azure, uh, coding and scripting and that kind of stuff is way more important than any other cloud provider uh, because you come across it a lot more. And so I've stuck in a bunch of coding stuff and it is very challenging for beginners, but I wanna try to get you um, best prepared as possible because when you go to the associate level with like the AZ-104, it is so much di more difficult. So I made this much harder than it had to be to prepare you for the next level despite the exam, okay? So uh, again, 30 hours on that side of your experience, uh, then you're already working with Azure or you maybe are, you've worked in AWS and GCP and you are trying to pick up Azure. The, it could be as little as six hours um, so, you know, generally the study time is 24 hours and I would say it's split between uh, lectures and labs and then you have your practice exams. So just make sure that you put your time uh, in with the practice exams. Practice exams are very, 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 very important for Azure because Azure has all these different question types and we'll talk about that in a moment. But yeah, the recommended study is one to two hours a day for 14 days, take your time, let it absorb. Uh, you could finish it in a couple days, but don't do that. <laughs> you know, make sure that you are acquiring the knowledge for long term. And the, the best way to do that is to take your time uh, and, and uh, not try to pass it in a weekend. Um, what does it take to pass the exam? Well, you got to watch those lecture videos. You got to do those hands-on labs and follow-alongs within your own account. Uh, strongly recommend that you do uh, some paid online practice exams. Uh, we give you a full free practice exam, like a full set, uh, which is on our platform there. We have a lot of practice exams. You can get that at exampro.co forward slash AZ900 and really helps support the course here. Uh, where do you take the exam? Well, you're gonna either take it in person at a test center or the convenience of your home. Um, and uh, so I would just say, just a second here. Sorry about that. Baco is knocking on my door. Baco is the other Andrew uh, who, you'll, you'll hear me talk about uh, Baco uh, a bit throughout the course, but uh, he's the uh, other person that works with me that's never on camera. You never see him, but um, he helps uh, do a lot of the work over here uh, with uh, the platform and um, creating the content. But anyway, so Azure uh, delivers exams via, <laughs> I got to re-click here, um, and the click's not working. There we go. Uh, Pearson View uh, is the proctoring system that Microsoft uses. In the past, there used to be a bunch of ones. There's Criterion, uh, which Google used to use, Google Cloud. There's uh, PSI Online, which um, AWS uh, like to use. But for whatever reason, both um, AWS and um, Microsoft exclusively only use Pearson View now. And I think um, GCP is now using PSI Online and everyone else uses PSI um, for whatever reason. But yeah, you have to use Pearson View and you can do it online or Pearson View has a, uh, a network of test centers that uh, you can go to in person. Personally, I recommend that you go in person if you can, because if there is a test center near you, the whole environment is controlled. It's gonna be a lot less stressful. Whereas if you do it from home, uh, you know, if you have family or you have uh, the least ideal place to uh, set up, because uh, you have to have a non-cluttered room and they have to inspect your room and things can go wrong. So I'm just saying, if you have that opportunity to go to an in-person in test center, leverage that. If you can't, that's okay. Uh, do what works for you. But understand that these certifications are proctored. 
Uh, so uh, when you go sit that exam, there is someone who is monitoring you to make sure that you are not cheating. Um, in terms of the content outline, there is three domains. Uh, I think there used to be more, but they grouped them into three. I'm not sure why. Uh, each domain has its own weighting, and, the, and that determines how many questions in a domain will show up. So we'll look, uh, take a look there. Something that's really interesting about Azure exams is that they, um, they don't give you the same amount of questions uh, uh, per person. So they'll give you like you like you might sit the exam and get 35 and your friend might get 40. So I had to give ranges here in terms of um, uh, the, the percentage that will appear on your exam. So we have describing cloud concepts, which is 25 to 30 percent. So you're going to get about 13 to 15 questions. Describe Azure architecture and services. That's 35 to 40 percent. That is the majority of uh, the certification. Most fundamentals is about learning all the services uh, that the cloud service provider is providing. Then we have described Azure management and governance. So that's uh, 30 to 35% with 14 to 16, uh, 16 questions. There is a, a subdomains under each of these. So of course security is in there and all those other things are in there, but we'll have to open up the exam guide uh, to see that okay. So um, again, you know, just pointing out that th that domain two is the largest one there. So make sure that we, we're gonna make sure that we know a wide range of Azure services, but we're also gonna make sure we know uh, in depth a, a bit more about those core services. Let's talk about grading. You gotta get a 700 points out of 1,000. So um, that's about 70% we say around because Azure uses skilled scoring, meaning that it doesn't necessarily mean you get 70% and you pass. Um, you could technically pass with 71%, or sorry, fail with 71%, but you could also technically pass with 69%. So just understand it's not based on percentage, it's based on a point system. In terms of what kind of questions you'll be getting, well, first let's talk about the range of questions, but you can get between 35 to 50. I usually say 37 to 37 to 50. Um, it's confusing because I don't know how they determine how many you get. Uh, when I sat my exam, I got about 35 questions. Some people get more. Uh, it's really, really uh, tricky to uh, to nail that down there. So you know, we say about ten to fourteen questions. Uh, you have uh, you can afford to get wrong. There are no penalty for wrong questions. So absolutely, uh, always fill in the answers. In terms of formatting questions, uh, we have multiple choice, multiple answer, drag and drop, yes and no. I do need to point out that uh, when you go and take uh, associate level and expert level certifications with Microsoft they have way more um, question types. And uh, just to help prepare you uh, for that level of difficulty, and it doesn't appear in these exams, but in our practice exams, we try to put in uh, case studies. So case studies is a much more advanced um, exam type question. And you know I really feel that we need to do that because if we don't, uh, you're gonna feel like you're ready for the AZ-104 and you're gonna to get totally blindsided because again, the difficulty ramp is super hard. So again, we're increasing the difficulty for your benefit. Uh, so if you feel like uh, this course is hard, that's good because it's gonna make the next one really, really easy for you. Uh, in terms of duration, uh, apparently it's 45 minutes. I cannot remember how long it was when I sat it. Uh, and when you search the internet, it's very difficult to determine that number. Uh, Microsoft does not make it easy to find out that number. You think that they would. Other cloud service providers, their uh, certification exams, they tell you right on the same page. Good luck finding it on Azure. But uh, 45 minutes would still leave us with about one minute per time. Again, it depends if you get the 35 questions or 45 questions. So we're gonna have to say about a minute. Uh, so we'll say the exam time is 45 minutes. Uh, some people say the seat time is 60 to 65 minutes. When we say seat time, we, we're talking about the time you should allocate for the exam. That includes things like time to review instructions, read and accept the NDA, complete the exam, provide the feedback at the end. Now, personally, I think that the seat time should always be 30 minutes on top of whatever that is. So if it's 45 minutes, it really would be um, uh, 75 minutes or 70 minutes or something like that. So, uh, you know, anyway, if you got a 45 minute exam, show up 30 minutes or 35 minutes earlier, because if you're checking in, especially online, you got to uh, pull out your uh, government ID. You got to uh, make sure the lighting is right. And then it scans it in. If things go wrong, uh, it, you know, it's going to cut in your time. So give yourself ample time and don't get stressed out um, uh, uh, for that. Okay. 
So these certifications are, uh, uh, for Microsoft are valid forever. This is specific for fundamental certifications. So if you take the um, any one that has 900 in the name, so AZ900, DP900, AI900, SC900, PL900, MS900, you get in the pattern here. If it says 900 in the name, it's a fundamentals. Those certifications do not expire. Um, and so I just want to make that very, very, very clear. Um, for the other levels, like Associate Expert, um, I think it's two years. It's either two or three years. But uh, the interesting thing is that if you want to get recertified, um, you don't have to pay to take the exam again. You can take a simpler test to uh, make sure that your knowledge is up to date. And I think it's free. So uh, that's a great advantage that uh, Microsoft has at the associate and expert level, specialty level. But uh, yeah, there we go. And I'll see you in the next one.